All right, so this MIDI hack video is going to serve as an explanation for the scale MIDI effect, which can be found under the MIDI effects category in Live's browser. And this is a tool that I overlooked for a really long time when I started using this software. I remember kind of glancing through the presets and every once in a while using them, but when I looked at the device itself, I had no idea what was going on. What does this grid mean? And I remember when Ableton Push, the first iteration came out, people thinking like, oh, this must interface with the push because it looks like the buttons on the faceplate of the push. And yeah, it does kind of, but it really has nothing to do with the layout of the buttons on the push. But what is this grid thing that we're looking at? Well, let's rewind a little bit because what the scale MIDI effect is designed to do is to allow you to restrict your playback notes to a certain scale. And the easiest way to get it to start doing this is to pick one of the presets. So let's say, for example, I want to only be able to play notes that are in the C minor scale. I can pick the C minor preset and overwrite the default preset. And now, no matter what I play on the keyboard, it will stick to the C minor scale. So even if I play a note that's not in the C minor scale, like C sharp, for example, what it does is it flats that note and it plays a C instead of a C sharp. So Try loading this preset, try hitting a C sharp on your keyboard and you'll hear a C. Here's the C, here's the C sharp, I'm hearing the same note. But let's explain this grid for a minute here because this is a point of confusion for a lot of students that I've worked with and other producers that I've worked with as well. So let's load in the default scale. And the default scale, by the way, is not doing anything. It literally doesn't do a thing. You can throw it on as many tracks as you want to, it'll make no difference. What the grid is showing us on the scale is, from left to right, it's showing us the incoming note, so the note that we're playing on the keyboard. From bottom to top, it's showing us what the outgoing note is going to be. Now, when we have a straight diagonal line of orange boxes across the grid, like we see in the default scale preset, what that means is that scale is not doing anything to transpose incoming MIDI notes. So. If we use the bass dial here, this is going to allow us to see what the lowest left corner note is representing. So if the bass is set to C, what that means is that this lowest left corner box represents a C note on the keyboard. So you can see how the whole backdrop of the scale is gray, but this is sort of a lighter gray. We'll think of this as white right now. Now the next box up, if we go diagonally from bottom left to top right, the next box up, if I uncheck this for a second, we can see that that's a darker gray. That's actually representing black or a black key on the keyboard. So this is representing a white key. This is representing a black key. So what we're seeing here is C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, etc. So basically we're seeing a chromatic scale here. These orange boxes are lined up so that if we play any note in, it doesn't matter what we play, if I play a C note, I'm going to hear a C note. If I play a C sharp, I'm going to hear a C sharp. If I play a D, I'm going to hear a D, etc. Now if I start changing the order of these orange boxes, let's say we take uh, what was a C sharp and we knock it down here. Now what we're saying is if I play my incoming note as a C sharp, it's gonna knock it down or flat it so that we hear a C. So now, again, if I play a C on the keyboard, I'll hear it. If I play a C sharp, instead of hearing the C sharp, which was once there, it's flatting it down so we now just hear a C. So if you know this and how this kind of scheme with the grid works here, you can go in and start making your own scale presets if you know certain scales and the keys that are contained or the pitches that are contained in those certain scales. But even if you don't, a great place to start would be to look through the presets. There's a lot of incredible presets here, some just incredibly awesome foreign scales that I didn't even know about until I purchased Live 9. So look through some of these for starters. And as another tip here, let's say you're just doing simple writing in either a major or minor scale, let's say C minor. But let's say, hey, I threw in the C minor preset, but I wanna write my track in, I don't know, F minor. Well, all you have to do is change the bass style because the intervals of how these notes are set up should translate across any minor scale. So if I go to F sharp, we can see now, again, our diagonal line here, it's kind of jagged because the orange boxes have been rearranged, but this is showing us now the bottom most 
note in the bottom left hand corner, this is representing an F, then an F sharp. F sharp is not in the F minor scale, so it plays an F for us. Now the idea behind this is that we can just kind of jam on notes on the keyboard. And if I just randomly trigger notes, everything I hear is gonna be set to that scale. In this case, it's gonna be the F minor scale. So play around with this one. I just wanted to give sort of an overview and a description because I noticed that this MIDI effect tends to confuse a lot of producers and a lot of students I've worked with. But now that you know a little bit about how this grid works, perhaps go in there and try setting up your own scale presets or working with existing ones with a little bit more knowledge as to how it's going to repitch or how it's going to transpose notes that you're playing on the keyboard. Another trick with this too is, remember how in a previous MIDI hack video we re-recorded the MIDI notes from the uh, output of, of MIDI effects? Go ahead and play something in with the scale preset and then re-record the MIDI and see how it's affected the MIDI notes. See how it's either flatted or sharp certain pitches to get them to fit into the correct scale. So again, just kind of a quick overview here. I hope that's been helpful. And if you're not that great at sticking within a certain key when you're writing melodies, or you're writing chord progressions in your tracks, scale is a really good MIDI effect to, uh, to you know, start restricting your playback a little and allowing you to play on the keyboard, have a little bit more fun and not worry too much about hitting a wrong note. So anyway, hope that's been helpful.